I've been watching a lot of Nailed It recently, so I feel like having something French. Hello there everyone, and welcome to John Drinks, the channel in which I, John, have a drink. And today, we're going a bit French. This in the bottle here is a French single malt whiskey. And you're probably there like, the French make whiskey? What? What's this? What's going on? It's, it's true, and do you know what? I dig it, and it's very much an acquired taste, but we'll be getting into that shortly. So, I suppose the first things first is I'm gonna pour it out. And then we're going to give it a few moments in the glass to kind of get used to the environment. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is, because I don't have the full bottle in front of me, wow, I've got a, a waft of that already, the nose is strong on this one, I'm going to read from the website because there's actually some interesting details about this whiskey which I think are worth noting. Um, it is a little bit flannelly and it is a little bit marketing, but do you know what, there is actual information in here as well. So. I'll give it a pass. Founded by former ballerina turned whiskey entrepreneur Alison Park, Bren was started with Alison's small life savings and a big dream to show terroir is possible when making single malt whiskey. She created Bren from seed to spirit with a third generation cognac maker as his family farm distillery at the heart of cognac. Now it's worth pointing out as well at no point is you know, there's no name for where this cognac is made. First released in New York City in 2012, the award-winning whiskey, okay, award-winning, I wish people would stop saying award-winning because everyone and their mum has an award at this point for something, brings a completely new style of French single malt whiskey to the rapidly emerging world whiskey segment. And that's where you can tell that this was a marketing person because nobody who gives, you know, nobody who cares about their craft says world whiskey segment. Um, it's like markets or, Portfolio, that's another one, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Allison distributed the first bottles of Bren via City Bike, nice sponsorship, in Manhattan, placing the product on the shelves of the city's top establishments and retailers. The flagship Bren Estate cask sold out within two months and Allison expanded distribution to 35 states and France over the next few years. Her second expression, Bren 10, was introduced in, <laughs> I love that, Bren 10, um, was introduced in October 2015. Only about 300 cases of the limited edition 10 year old single malt whiskey are available each year. Our whiskies begin in the fields of cognac, with its famous mineral rich soils and mild microclimate. Every ingredient is sourced locally. 100% organic and non-GMO. Bren is fully certified organic by both EU and USDA standards. Ah, oh, I miss EU standards. Two types of, oh, I thought I said heroin then, Jesus. Two types of heirloom barley grown on the estate are the starting point for Bren. After malting, a proprietary strain of yeast that has been in the distiller's family for generations is added to the fermentation, creating a beautifully floral mash. Quite a departure from new make created on pot stills, the classic choice for traditional single malts. Um, there is one flavor note that I'm gonna talk about quite a bit. So get your shot glasses ready because you could probably turn it into a drinking game. Banana. Banana. A little bit of vanilla. And then some foam bananas. I've spoken to several people about this. Um, I've also spoken to uh, Moa, Swedish whiskey girl. Um, she comes into my bar every, well, she doesn't at the minute, obviously, because it's not open, but um, we were discussing Bren and we, you know, we were talking about our in individual experiences with it. And we both said banana at the exact same time. And it's one of those connection moments where you're just like, I'm not talking shy, people agree with me. Which, you know, is wholesome and life affirming. Banana. For those of you still conscious, would you like to know what it tastes like? Get another shot ready. I'm getting banana milkshake. <laughs> and the aftertaste is foam bananas. Okay, enough with the banana. Although, seriously, it's... <laughs> It's so fucking banana, it's ridiculous. Um, the person that gave this to me, um, they s described it as banana schnapps. There's a little bit of vanilla in there. Like vanilla ice cream, it's quite a creamy vanilla. I'm trying to eke out other fruits. On the finish, it's kind of going a little bit sour. It's kind of closer to like green gauges, cranberry, that kind of a... Goji berries as well. Something very sharp in the back. Not the kind of finish that I normally get from a whiskey. It's, it's unusual. A little bit of menthol, a little bit of mint as well. There is more going on with than just banana, but I, I will say that it is banana. There's a lot of banana in there. If anyone's still alive, I'm going to add water now. Now, this is a 40% spirit, so I'm just gonna do two drops. Do you know what, actually, I found these sport bottles, they're actually quite good for this because you can control the flow really well. Um, I've seen people with teaspoons like spilling it all over the place, and I'm definitely guilty of that because I'm clumsy as anything. Um, 
That actually works quite nicely, so if you've got one kicking around, it works quite well. Any guesses what I'm going to say? Getting aromas of Cavendish bananas. There's something a little bit spearminty in there as well, in all seriousness. A little bit of like a green tea. Something floral like violets as well. Now, I do worry a little bit about the integrity of 40% malts when you add water, so I don't know how this is going to go. Mm. Beautiful. The banana's a little bit subdued now. I'm getting more floral components. Rose water, lilac, a little more starchy, close to plantain, which is still of the banana family, so you know, we're still not a million miles away. It's got a little bit spicy now. It's clove, nutmeg, spearmint, and the finish is very dry. Very dry. So dry. I don't, where am I? Yeah, it's pretty nice. I will say this much, if you don't like bananas, you're gonna fucking hate this whiskey. If anyone did participate in this as a drinking game, by the way, John Drinks promotes responsible drinking. Any of you that are still with us. If you haven't passed away, then check out my link down below for my Patreon. Um, like and subscribe and all that nonsense. And before you go, I have something that I need to revive on this channel briefly that I've been waiting specifically for this whiskey to do. Does anybody remember this thing? So a few months ago, I bought a load of Japanese Kit Kats and I tried one at the end of each video. And they sort of ended up accidentally themed around whatever it was I was. There was no fore planning, it just kind of worked out that way. Um, so I had this bottle and there was a Kit Kat in here that I thought these two pair up really well. So I've been waiting for the moment and now is that moment. <laughs> this is Banana Kit Kat. It's actually Easter banana Kit Kat. Well, it says Easter egg paint. Is this banana? Have I been led up a tree? Oh no. So this is now a confectionery review. So if you came for the whiskey, we're finished. You may leave if you want. But if you want to know what a ridiculous banana Kit Kat smells and tastes like, then stick around because that's what's happening now. It's sort of anemic caramel color. It kind of smells like white chocolate. Is anyone sick of me saying banana yet? Oh yeah, man. Do you know what? Banana flavoured white chocolate should be a thing. And this proves it. Because it's exactly that. It's like you made white chocolate with banana milk. And that entire image is all you need to know. And there's a Kit Kat wafer in there just for good measure. I think there's like some banana flavoured gunk in the middle. But do you know what? I will say as well, it's a subtle flavour. So they nailed it. I'm going to eat the rest of this Kit Kat. Thank you very much for watching. And do do all the, you know, metrics-y things because it gives YouTube a hard-on or something. And do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else. And maybe having another Kit Kat. I don't know, you haven't decided. Why are you still here? Go! You're still here. Man, and people say I'm weird.